Hi and welcome to Low Content Japanese Puzzle Resources. My name's Ron Pumphlet, I'll be your coach. This is an updated training video one done on the 14th of July 2020. Now in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create thousands of puzzles and answers using the Crossword Express software. So the example I'll be using today is on Sudoku. So you can use this training when to create any of these other uh, Japanese puzzles here. Okay, so without further ado, let's go and get the software. So if you haven't already downloaded the software, you need to go to crosswords.com. That's with C-R-A. US, not the normal C-R-O-S-S, crossroads.com forward slash download dot html. When you're on this page, you'll be able to read everything about this person's software. Uh, the history, facts, online puzzles, contact, and then you can see the number of different uh, um, puzzles and crossword puzzles that he has included in this software. So what you need to do is click on the download. If you have challenges installing it then just follow the instructions that you can read underneath the download button. So once you've downloaded the software and you've unzipped it I've put it in a folder called Crossword Express. This is how it will look inside once you've downloaded everything. So the next thing you need to do is to click on the Crossword Express dot jar. And that will activate the software for you. Okay, so it comes up with the Tatami or it could come up with any of the other software. So all you need to do is click on Sudoku, go to and go. Now I've used this software before so it's picking up the uh, samples uh, templates that I've already built. So we will go to, uh, no we won't go, yes we will go into here. This is where, uh, if you didn't see what I've done, let's go here. Start a new puzzle. So you can see I've actually entered quite a bit of information in here. You can actually get some of this or most of this printed onto your puzzles. I don't actually personally use this any longer because it's just too distracting for the users. So I just bypass this altogether and I go down to build options. Now I've already created these uh, difficulty number one puzzles. So I will show you, once you fill this in, you can do uh, numerical. You can also do alpha numerical, which means you can add A, B, C, D, or any of the other alphabet letters up to I. So if we wanted to do this purely in alphabet, We've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now we have an alphabetical or alphabet Sudoku. So if we want to do alphabet and numerical, then as we had before, we can do uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, if you do a combination of the alphabet and numerical, please do give that key set to your users so they know that the first four characters are not numbers but alphabet. In here you can select from difficulty 1 to 19. In the group files I have a uh, document in there that gives you a, an idea of how to categorize the different difficulty levels. So once we have, uh, we decide how many puzzles we want to do, I personally do 10,000 every single time. 
because it does take a wee while to create these and it's better to get it all over and done with right at the beginning so I can make as many uh, puzzle books up to using 10,000 images and generally that's nearly a hundred books. Then with the first puzzle number you'll see this is all done based on the date, month and day. Uh, very confusing so what I do is I convert it back to the year whatever that is 10,000 and then I go 101. So now that we have decided what symbol set we are going to use and the difficulty level and we're going to create 10,000 puzzles we've set the first puzzle number all we need to do now is click on OK go back up to build and go to click on start building this will immediately take off and start creating your Sudoku puzzles as you can see here flashing by it tells you what puzzle number it's up to and creating now while that's doing that let's go have a look where it's actually storing the puzzles so if we go into the Sudoku folder we can actually see that this is where the Sudoku templates are being generated and stored these are not the completed puzzles and solutions this is a template so once these templates have been created then we can go back to the software up to tasks and start generating our puzzles and solutions so until this is finished we're up to number 300 okay 400 I will come back when the 10,000 have been generated. Okay, so it's now completed creating the uh, templates and it shows you where it's saved them and the last number. So what we're going to do here now is just click on OK and for us to go and start creating the puzzles the actual puzzles and solutions we need to go through to tasks and print this puzzle so from here we go to select puzzle and puzzle for the layout now the layout I like using is uh, uh, leaving the left and the top as one and the width and the height as 150 now that's 150 pixels okay now at the right at the very beginning I showed you how you can actually include the information if you wish to go down that road for adding to your puzzles so what you would do here is you'd come in here and you would select puzzle title so that would give you the title that you put in your, into the uh, software. So if we go to view, print preview, you'll see that it comes up with the Sudoku puzzle and that's the puzzle number. However, f to use this in the puzzle, um, puzzle book compiler, we actually use change these numbers to normal uh, numerical you can still use and save this at the top if you like and remember these as one uh, but make sure that you use this for the um, solutions as well so well we'll go through that in a moment now if you wanted to add any other information to this <clears throat> excuse me then you just simply go through here and pick out whatever it is that you want to add so that's really the only difference we could put in into this particular uh, puzzle because we're not doing crosswords so we don't need solutions it might help not only to remove the layout but to change the puzzle layout at the top so that's my boo-boo okay so now we'll go to export and 
we will redo all these numbers. So we're going to create 10,000 puzzles. So we're going to click on export. And I've already mentioned here that that doesn't work by creating a new folder. And we're simply going to click on save. Now when we go into the folder, we can see that the puzzles are being created. So we shall come back once there are 10,000 images created and I'll show you how to store them to use the puzzle book compiler software. See you soon. or will talk to you soon. Okay, so all the puzzles have been created, all 10,000 of them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to prepare uh, the images to be used with the puzzle book compiler. Um, now you don't have to use the puzzle book compiler if you're just making these uh, uh, images and you've got some other program you want to use, that's fine. So we're going to go for number one, scroll all the way down to number 10 and use the shift key and then click on the last image. Then use, this is for Windows, I'm not sure what it is for, for a Mac. So we'll do Control X and we'll go over to the folder that I've already created here in my puzzle Sudoku and I've already got a PLR level 1 so this is going to be PLR 1 level 1 and we're going to uh, we've made two folders in here one for the puzzles one for the solutions so this is for the puzzles so we'll just do Control V and paste those images into this folder now hopefully it won't take that long to do and um, I'll come back when it's completed. Right, so that's all done. So now we're going to go back to the go up one level and we're going to click on solutions. That's to prepare this folder for later. And we're going to go back to the software because we've actually finished doing exporting the puzzle. Now what we want to do is change the puzzle to solution and change the layout from puzzle to solution. And as we can have a quick look to see what it looks like. That's fine by me. So we'll go straight up to tasks to export and we'll just change the bottom numbering here back to our weird numbering system which makes it easier to follow. And then from there, we just click on export. Once again, just click on save. Then we can go back to the crossword express folder. And there we are. We can see the solutions are being created. So once that's done the 10,000, I'll be back. So now we have the 10,000 solutions. So we're going to do control X and we're going to put them over in the folder that we have, that we got ready before. PLR, PLR1 level one, that's what I'm, folder I'm putting into, and the solutions. So we'll copy a V or control V, and soon it should start copying. So that's it for the updated training video one. We will come back in video two and show you how to use the Fastone resize or renamer software and we'll have a look at the uh, puzzle book compiler to create our puzzle books. So until video two, I bid you adieu and see you later. My name is Ron Pumphrey and I'm out of here. Bye for now.